Glow Globe Telecom. Inc. SC orders Globe to give eight years of back pay to employee fired for doing her job. The Supreme Court has ordered the Ayala-owned Globe Telecom to pay eight years' worth of back wages and separation pay to an employee it dismissed for reducing her father's P999 cell phone charge to zero due to poor service. The Supreme Court First Division led by Chief Justice Alexander Gesmundo sided with former Globe retail shop specialist K. Abastias Ebitner and ruled that what she did wasn't a form of misconduct even if it benefited her father. Another circumstance which militates against petitioner, Globe's accusations is the fact that, as already mentioned, respondent was authorized to make credit adjustments as retail shop specialist. Thus, her actions, such as making credit adjustments, must be presumed regular unless otherwise clearly proven, the ruling penned by Justice Ramon Paul Hernando wrote. The court said that Globe failed to explain how Ebitner's credit adjustment was baseless. In all, what is only firmly established by the proceedings below is that Respondent made a credit adjustment on her father's account in the amount of P998.99. By no stretch of imagination can this be considered serious misconduct. The decision, which was promulgated last January, read Globe's fraud risk team flagged Ebitner in 2015 for reducing the P998.99 due in her father's account without following proper procedure. She explained that she followed protocol after her mother, who used her father's mobile number complained that calls were dropped frequently and reception was poor. Ebitner also stressed that her role specifically allowed her to make credit adjustments to subscriber accounts over service complaints. She offered to pay the adjusted amount to Globe to put an end to the issue, but to no avail. Court documents showed that Ebitner was preventively suspended and later on dismissed by Globe following the incident in 2015, prompting her which got her to file a case for illegal dismissal before the National Labor Relations Commission. The case eventually reached the Supreme Court. The court said that while an illegally dismissed employee is entitled to reinstatement, that was no longer an option for Ebitner due to strained relations between her and Globe. In addition to paying Ebitner eight years' worth of back pay, the court ordered the Ayala-owned Telco to pay her a separation pay equivalent to one month per year of service from the time she started working for Globe until the decision becomes final. UBP, Union Bank of the Philippines, Inc. When trial turns to error, Union Bank sends wrong mass email. Someone from Union Bank's tech team probably got an earful because of this boo boo. The Aboida's owned lender mistakenly sent what should have been internal test emails to existing clients, sparking confusion on a Thursday night. Union Bank's mistaken email had a subject line test for email hash three inches in a plain body text of Welcome to UBP family which got into the inboxes of current depositors. The bank followed up with an apology email three hours later, this time carrying its virtual letterhead and layout. Dear valued client, you may have received an email with subject test for email hash three feet that was intended for a limited number of recipients. We confirm that this comes from our official email address and the list of test recipients may have inadvertently included your email. The follow-up email read, Please be advised that this email does not require any further action from your end and we apologize for any confusion or concern this may have caused, it added. Both came from the sender sf.noreply at ub.unionbankph.com, which was confirmed to be a legitimate company-owned address. HLCM Wholesome Philippines, Inc. Wholesome Philippines struggles with lower revenues and rising energy costs. Cement giant Wholesome Philippines' net income dropped by 63% to P941.8 million in the past year, mainly due to reduced sales and increased production costs. Revenues declined to P26.6 billion from P26.9 billion due to lower sales volumes, despite improved prices, and decreased demand from private infrastructure projects. The company's margins were negatively impacted by higher energy prices, despite reduced consumption of imported clinker and cement. 
To counteract the rising costs of coal, fuel, and power, Holsom implemented a series of price increases during the year and pursued cost reduction measures. However, these actions were insufficient to offset the extraordinary 60% surge in fuel and energy costs compared to the previous year. SMPH, SM Prime Holdings, Inc. Sai Bling's reward SM Prime's top executives with 13% hike in pay, perks for fantastic effort in 2022. SM Prime Holdings, SMPH, gave a P76 million hike in salaries and bonuses last year to its top management led by its president Jeffrey C. Lim. The Sai family, owner of SMPH, increased the compensation of its top brass by 13% to P664 million from P588 million in 2021. Lim and the four other highest paid executives, CFO John Nai Pung Ong, Mall's President Stephen Tan, Residential President Jose Mari Banzan, and Leisure Head Shirley C. Ong, received a 7.5% hike in compensation to P187 million from P174 million in 2021. The rest of SMPH's management received a heftier hike of 15% to P477 million from P414 million in 2021. The generous financial rewards came after SMPH profits surged 38% year-on-year to P30.1 billion in 2022 mainly from malls, up more than double, rent, up 92%, and cinema, up 420%. SMPH boosted its profits despite a 13% drop in residential income to P40.1 billion. Mond Mond Nissan Corporation Betty Ang's fake meat flop. Mond Chuck's Quorn's 2023 OPEX amid stinking sales, diverts P2.1 billion budget to core brands in Mond Nissan. Mond has drastically cut down the operating budget of corn foods in 2023 as the alternative meat baby of billionaire Obedi Ang continues to pile up losses. Mond reported that it has realigned corn's P2.14 billion operating expenditures budget for 2023 to the capital expenditures program of its Asia-Pacific branded food and beverage business APAC BFB, specifically its money spinners My San Biscuits. Dutch Mill, and Lucky Me. Mond has also allocated the P1.1 million capex of corn, from its initial P48.6 billion public offering in 2021, to the APAC BFB. With the budget realignment, Mond would discontinue its plan to use P5 billion of its retained earnings for the firm's 2023 capex or just three months after the board approved the plan in December 2022. MONDE's fake meat business, which accounts for 20% of its total sales, lost P194 million in the first nine months of 2022, a 121% reversal from its profit of P929 million in the same period. Quorn's poor demand in the face of rising competition and inflation in its core United Kingdom market has made it difficult for Mond to boost sales since acquiring the business for P39 billion in 2015. During its IPO, Mond's CEO, Henry Sosanto, predicted explosive growth for Quorn, stating that, 10 years from now, based on several studies, this meat alternative protein business will be at least 10% of the total alternative sector. That's 1,000% in the next 10 years. MWC Manila Water Company, Inc. MVP Group refutes reports of Minelid stake sale. Metro Pacific Investments Corp., which is led by telco magnate Manuel V. Pangalinan, has denied reports of selling its stake in Minelid Services Inc. The holding firm, in response to inquiries, clarified that it has not disposed of any or all of its stake in the water and wastewater services provider. This statement comes after journalist Ramon Tulfo's report that Minelid had been sold to ultra-billionario Enrique K. Razon Jr., who controls Manila Water Company Inc. Tulfo also posted Razon's text message denying the acquisition. Hi Mon getting a lot of messages about your tweet on Minelid. FYI we have not acquired Minelid. 
Thanks. My Neelid covers the cities of Manila, all but portions of San Andres and Santa. Ana, Quezon City, west of San Juan River. West Avenue, EDSA. Congressional, Mindanao Avenue. The northern part starting from the districts of Holy Spirit and Batasan Hills, Makati, west of South Super Highway, Calucan, Pase, Parañaque, Las Piñas, Muntinlupa, Valenzuela, Navotas and Malabon, all in Metro Manila. The cities of Cavite, Bacoor and Imus, and the towns of Cahuit, Noveleta and Rosario, all in the province of Cavite. FGEN First General Corporation higher electricity sales push up earnings of Lopez-led First Gen. Lopez-led renewable energy firm First General Corp. reported a 5% increase in recurring net income to $265 million, P14.3 billion, in 2022. Revenues reached $2.667 billion, PHP $144.1 billion, 23% higher than the previous year on higher electricity sales, as well as elevated fuel and wholesale electricity spot market WESM prices. The company's natural gas portfolio accounted for 66% of its total consolidated revenues, while 31% came from energy development corporations, EDC, geothermal, wind, and solar plants. The remaining 3% came from first gen's hydro plants. Despite lower earnings in the first nine months, first gen was able to produce better earnings for the year, thanks to EDC's strong recovery, stable income from the hydro platform, and the containment of fuel supply curtailment issues from Malampaya. First General has 3,501 megawatts of installed capacity in its portfolio, which accounts for 19% of the country's gross generation. GTCAPGT Capital Holdings, Inc. Tai Bling's GT Capital posts solid 2022 growth, profit soars to P18.4 billion. Despite elevated inflation and interest rates, Thai-led conglomerate GT Capital Holdings Inc. saw its 2022 profit jump 67% to P18.4 billion on the strong performances of its banking, automotive, real estate and insurance units. Metrobank, Toyota Motor Philippines, Federal Land, and AXA Philippines contributed P32.8 billion, P5.7 billion, P4.5 billion, and P2.5 billion respectively, to GT Capital's total earnings. Metro Pacific Investments Corp., an associate of GT Capital, also contributed to the conglomerate's earnings, with its core net income growing 15%. Despite challenges such as the steep depreciation of the Philippine peso and declining gross premiums, GT Capital's core net income jumped 45% to P15.9 billion, thanks to the country's economic recovery normalized mobility, and resurgent consumption. GT Capital President Maria Luza Bautista expressed confidence in the company's outlook for the coming year, thanks to the strong market position in key sectors they represent. Toyota Motor Philippines delivered another solid performance, achieving a record high market share of 50%, with 174,106 units sold due to new product launches, price increases, and lower expenses. However, a steep depreciation of the Philippine peso versus the US dollar resulted in a 5% drop in TMP's net income to P5.7 billion. Vince S. Sacco, GT Capital Auto and Mobility Holdings president, said the company remains upbeat about its prospects this year with the expected stabilization of exchange rates, the regularization of supply chains, and the robust economic growth forecast by the government. Federal lands earnings soared by 363% to P4.5 billion, driven by gains on its investment in Federal Land NRE Global, Inc. FNG, while total revenues jumped 49% to P15.4 billion. AXA Philippines also grew its net earnings by 12% to P2.5 billion due to lower attritional losses from its general insurance business. ACR Alsen's Consolidated Resources, 
Inc. Alcantara led ACR reports 52% surge in profit amid strong power demand in Mindanao. Alsons Consolidated Resources, ACR, of the family of billionario Tomas Alcantara, achieved a steady growth with a 52% jump in last year's profit to P617 million due to the robust demand for power in Mindanao. The company's revenues also increased by 19% to 12 billion pesos, thanks to the continuous growth of power demand in the region. ACR's Deputy Chief Financial Officer, Philip Edward B. Sagan, said that the day-to-day -day activities on the island are gradually getting back to normal after the pandemic. The Sarangani Energy Corporation, SEC, ACR's 210 megawatts baseload power plant, remained the primary revenue and income driver for the company. It supplies power to crucial areas in Mindanao, including Sarangani Province, General Santos, Cagayan de Oro, Iligan, Dipalig, Dapitan, Pagadian, Samal, Tagum, Kitapawan, and Butuan. Additionally, the company's 100 MW Western Mindanao Power Corporation diesel plant in Zamboanga City also contributed significantly to ACR's revenue growth for the year. Telephone. PLDT, Inc. PLDT reaches settlement with equipment suppliers, reducing CapEx commitments by P15 billion. Telco giant PLDT has reached a settlement with its major equipment suppliers, resulting in a decrease in its capital expenditure, CapEx commitments to these vendors from P48 billion to P33 billion. According to a statement released by PLDT, discussions with vendors, who represent approximately 80% of its outstanding CapEx commitments as of December 31, 2022, have been completed. The P48 billion represents 12.7% of a P379 billion, four-year capex program aimed at modernizing the company's network. In addition, PLDT announced that it has substantially completed an investigation into P48 billion in overspending over the last four years, which revealed no fraudulent transactions. The review, conducted by external counsel with the assistance of accounting and audit consultants, focused on the period 2019 to 2022 and found no evidence of fraud, intentional concealment, or bad faith conduct on the part of any employee of the company, and no basis to restate the company's historical financial statements. Alter. Alternergy Holdings Corporation. PH conglomerate and global energy firms Itene Wind Power Project partnership with Vince Perez led Alternergy. Three energy firms have shown interest in partnering with Alternergy Tene Wind Corporation, a wholly owned subsidiary of Alternergy led by Vince Perez, for the development of the proposed Tene Wind Power Project in Rizal. The companies have submitted their letters of intent, and Alternergy will review their respective proposals to select a preferred equity partner. One of the three firms is affiliated with one of the largest energy companies in Europe while another is a regional renewable energy company with a portfolio of wind and solar projects in the Asia-Pacific region. The third company is a major domestic energy player and part of a large Philippine conglomerate. The Tanay Wind Power Project is a shovel-ready project with major permits already obtained, and it has completed several technical studies, including logistics, environmental, and energy assessments. The Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines has also approved its height clearance. Alternergy plans to develop additional wind, offshore wind, solar, and run-of-river hydro projects, with up to 1,370 megawatts of capacity. Funding for these projects will come from the proceeds of Alternergy's initial public offering.